Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so grateful that you are here and I hope that you are having an absolutely fantastic morning, afternoon, or night, whatever it is for you when this video finally reaches you. I currently have a video that I've been working on over the past week compressing and about to be uploading, but I was getting a few more comments today from those of you who follow me on other social media platforms asking me what ended up happening with my hackers, how I got hacked, how the whole thing happened because let's be honest, it is giving naive. And I thought, you know what, why not come on, do a little story time, catch up with you guys, tell you guys how your girl got scammed, manipulated, hacked, bamboozled in hopes that somebody watching this will avoid anybody putting their hands in their bag on their accounts in their personal messages you get the gist I feel pretty stupid given everything that's happened but also with that being said after digging into this world of online hacking of hackers um, and the lengths that people will go the way that people will hurt one another, my mind is blown, and let's just say, these hackers are getting smart in their methods. At least, I'd like to think so. So let's get into what happened. All right, so before those of you from here on YouTube start commenting, saying like, Haley, I didn't notice anything, I didn't see any content, I didn't see any posts, that is because I did not get hacked here on YouTube. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I did not get hacked on YouTube. I actually didn't even get hacked on X or on Instagram or on any of like the main platforms, TikTok, that you would think I would be hacked on. Oh no, I got hacked on Facebook. I know. So let's backtrack for a second here and kind of give the story as to how my channel or like my page on Facebook even became a thing and then how I ended up losing it and the journey of emotions that I went through nonetheless. But before I get into that, hi, hello, I have missed you guys so, so, so very much. I hope that you are doing truly incredible and thank you for being here. But with that being said, finally, let's get into what happened. All right, so I had started posting my content on Facebook around a year ago. I started working with a really incredible company and it was kind of like a secondary platform that my content was being posted on. It was super cool to see like the different community on there. It was a whole new audience. I know that some of you that follow me on here and on other forms of social media did transfer over to my Facebook and those are those of you who have been messaging me but essentially I was taking content that I was posting on YouTube and then reposting it on Facebook. And this was doing very well. I was having a lot of fun with it. I still am, thank goodness. And um, I just wasn't entirely familiar with Facebook. With that being said though, I had worked with companies even prior to posting my content on Facebook and had linked certain individuals to my Facebook account in the past in order to run certain campaigns that I was working on and just different business opportunities. So it wasn't a foreign concept to me having somebody linked to any of my social medias actually, especially when it's a reputable company, obviously. But you should be very careful in anybody that you're talking to when it comes to linking them or associating them with any of your social media pages. This I knew. I knew to be careful with linking people to my social media pages. I knew, or at least I thought I knew, how to vet certain emails coming in to the best of my ability. Um, I've been doing YouTube and social media full time for the last seven years now. Crazy. Um, and so over the years, I've really accumulated a knowledge on like which emails seem legitimate when it comes to companies that want to collaborate or companies that want to sponsor some content or just work together in general because you do get a ton of emails on a daily basis, some being real and then some being fake scams or I don't even know what the purpose of some of them is, but nonetheless, you kind of have to get used to filtering through the emails and the signs to look for as far as which emails are legitimate. And 
So when I had gotten an email back, I believe it was September, don't quote me on the exact time frame because I only know the time frame after things went south off the top of my head, but um, I had received an email from a company that wanted to work together on an upcoming podcast for one of their um, personalities, one of their influencers. I really don't like using that word specifically, but essentially a very, very well-known, well-established, well-respected woman's podcast that was very successful. Let's talk about the email for a second. So the email itself that it was being sent from seemed pretty good. There was no major red flags there. And the way that the email itself was structured was phenomenal. This email was so well-written, it was personable which is something to look out for if you're somebody who's starting out in social media or you are somebody who's receiving different emails from brands and potential collaborations and partnerships is whether or not it seems like this email was just sent to thousands of people or if it's customized to you, your content, your niche, what you're good at, why they think you'd be a great mix and match and whatever. So um, I ended up reading through the email. Again, it was very personal, very detailed. It outlined what they wanted me to talk about on the podcast. It was very specific. It had, um, I believe, links to said podcast. Um, and because the email itself was so professionally crafted, and there's a whole thing on that by the end of the video, but because the email itself was so carefully crafted, it was personal and it seemed legit, we did respond back. Now this is where it kind of came out of my hands at this point. I had my personal manager dealing with, as she does, she's incredible, those sponsorship collaborative emails. So I looked it over, I said, yes, I want more information. This would be fantastic. Let's send it off, whatever. So we ended up responding back and we corresponded with them for a couple of months. And again, you guys, these like conversations, so well written, um, very personal, reflecting and, or recircling back to what they wanted from me. Essentially, they wanted me to talk about self-love, my journey of mental health, what it's like being a woman in the online space, um, creating in the online space, how I pull myself out from these ruts that I've been so open about. And it was so in alignment with who I am and what I wanted to talk about. I was like, you know what, this is fantastic. I was like, this is so good. Like I can sit down with a strong, powerful woman with a great head on her shoulders, a successful career. Like this woman is so successful. And honestly, as embarrassing as it is now, I was super humbled and excited that somebody of this stature and somebody of this level just in general thought that my voice had something of substance to share on her platform and so so embarrassing looking back now but it's not like i i had the purest of intentions and i genuinely believed that they did as well and that's where i fell short but uh, I was thinking about how I was going to do this and their main thing that they kept reiterating and I thought that this was so fantastic and in hindsight, thank you for saving me the time that I would have spent trying to structure something. But um, they had said that they don't want any script, they don't want any like points, they want it to be just a natural conversation and I was so excited about that. I'm like, this is gonna be so wonderful. Like I'm gonna sit with her and it's gonna be a candid conversation and it's gonna be two women who have overcome so much and have similar dreams. You get the point. So we went back and forth, we went over um, compensation, what I was looking at as far as the time that I'd be on with her, where we posted, how it was going to go. And now we've transitioned from like fall time, early fall, into the beginning of this year, 2024. So this has been, I will give them this. They were dedicated to snagging this out from under me. Never again hackers, by the way. Anywho. <laughs> So uh, we've been talking now for a few months, going back and forth. Again, these emails were directly between said company and uh, my personal manager. And so then it comes time around to when we're like picking a slot as to when we're going to do this podcast. Oh, and I haven't mentioned up until this point, this was supposed to be a live podcast. So essentially we were gonna stream live and then there was gonna be the replay afterwards for anybody who may have missed it, but it was gonna be my first live podcast. And I thought that was super cool. And so uh, we had kind of 
honed in on a specific week that seemed to work well for all parties involved. And then we had decided on a specific date. And that was when I had received the email that was then forwarded to me, obviously, stating what the next steps were. And the next steps for this were going to be uh, that I was to get on a Zoom call with somebody from their company, from their PR company, and go over how the day of going live is gonna work, kind of walk through like on Zoom, the Facebook page itself, how we were gonna link everything up on like the live platforms, and just what it was gonna look like in general. So we had the Zoom scheduled, and we ended up getting on the Zoom. And one thing that I noticed right away was that this individual did not have their camera on, which is totally normal in a lot of Zoom meetings, but I did have mine on because I was under the impression initially that we were gonna do like some tests and whatnot. So I'm there, uh, we're sitting there in this room and it begins so normal again. He's like detailing like, hey, so you are familiar with this individual. Um, you know, I'm trying to think of like exactly what they were saying. In the moment, I'm trying to process information, be professional. They're talking about, um, okay, well, this is what we're gonna do. Again, he reiterates like my obligations, like contractual obligations as far as like, what they expected from me, how they expected me to just like talk and how they want this journey and this, that. And here's where the couple of red flags come in, okay, you guys? I get it now. Be kind to me in the comments, okay? I look back. It's like they say, I say it all the time. Hindsight is twenty twenty. I should have known better. It's one of those things where you look back and you're like, ah, there's the red flag. Like you go on the date and you're like, eh, maybe we can go out again. And then the guy ends up never going out with you again. And then you look back and you're like, hey, red flag, red flag, red flag. That was kind of weird. Why did I let it slide? This was one of those situations. And I did, I let it slide. All right, so let's just get to the point. The nitty gritty, the hacking, I get it. So um, it gets to a point where he's asking me to allow their media company access into my Facebook, nothing that would grant them any permissions in order to become like admin or do this or that. Um, but just, he was just explaining like, actually the way that he had explained it would ease any anxieties that anyone might have. He's like, just so you know, they won't be able to post anything on your behalf. They won't be able to like impersonate you essentially. They were like, this is a company, like our company is essentially going to work under you on your Facebook page for this event. Um, and then if we do any events going forward, any lives, whatever. And I should have known at the red flag, like I was just saying, when he started asking me why I wasn't verified on Facebook and kept asking me if I was verified on Instagram. Now, why should these be massive red flags to me? Well, if this company was trying to have me on their podcast with this successful business woman, I'm talking like actress, like we're talking up their level. Wouldn't you think they'd have vetted me out? They'd have seen that I was, you know, in fact verified on Instagram, that I wasn't on Facebook um, and know these things about me. And the way that he kept asking like, why? Looking back should have been weird to me, but in the moment I was thinking, oh, maybe for promotional purposes, they were kind of hoping that I would be verified on this platform as well. I don't know what I was thinking in the moment, but I wasn't thinking that you were gonna steal from me. I'll tell you what I wasn't thinking, <laughs> hackers. But anyways, um, he has me do these things and it was, it was coming off very weird to me. I wasn't grasping what he was saying and I was embarrassed at the time of it because I felt like I was technically challenged. I'm like, why can't I figure out what he's asking me to do? Now I understand why I couldn't figure it out. It's because I wasn't supposed to be doing it, but he asks me to share my screen with him and he starts telling me all these things to do and how to add them. And again, I've added people to my Facebook page before, prior to all of this, years ago even, in order to work on certain campaigns, even through Instagram, through like the Meta Business Suite. Anyways, besides the point, but, He's directing me, and again, we've been talking for months, so my guard isn't fully up. I'm just confused and embarrassed, and I keep apologizing to the guy, you guys. I kept saying, like, I'm so sorry, sir. Like, I, I don't know why I can't figure this out. He's like, it's fine, it's fine, we'll figure it out. But I remember there was a couple points. <laughs> okay, I'll, you know what, we'll talk about that in a second, but there was a couple of points where he was getting frustrated with me for, like, not doing things right, and he was even having me, like, email my stuff. It was getting confusing. Until finally he's like, all right, all is great. And he continues with the facade here, y'all. He continues. He's like, 
All right, so day of, here's what we need. Uh, please send me after this your preferred method of payment. You know, I've already given you our options for payment. Um, it was as if all was normal and all was well. And then I proceed, before I get off the call, to apologize multiple times to this guy for how bad I was at letting him hack me. I mean, unbeknownst to me, but of letting him hack me. And he allows me to be kind and apologize. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I don't know why that was so complicated. Um, I don't know why I wasn't grasping it. This is a little different than what I've done before. And he's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's all good. We got it done, it's all good. And I'm like literally apologetic to this guy. Get off the call and I start looking at like what he had me do. And I start having these strange thoughts go through my head of like, hmm, this is looking a little, a little weird. That was a little weird. And so I'm texting, you know, people that I work with and I'm like, hey, like I'm not feeling too good about this. Something's off. Am I the only one thinking this? Am I being paranoid? I go and I talk to Tyler. I'm like, something feels weird. And he's like, you know what? Then remove their access. Tell them something feels weird. Reconnect with them. It'll ease your mind. I went to go and remove their access and it pops up that I no longer have those permissions. Next thing I know, I'm logged out of my Facebook. All of my fears are reconfirmed. Everything I was thinking to myself of like, mm, like, am I being over paranoid? That was weird. Should I feel hacked? So what do I do? I send them an email and I'm like, hey, can't get into my page now. And what does the guy do? He replies the next day acting really stupid. He's like, what? That's weird. Why can't you get into your page? I wonder why, sir. So at this point, I'm waiting. I'm like, what was their intention behind this page? And immediately I'm like, they definitely want the monetary value of having a Facebook page that's posting content that's getting views. But then I'm like, what are they gonna do? And now they're in as me. Thank God my Instagram was not linked to my Facebook page. They were not able to hack that. But looking back now, I understand why they wanted to know about Instagram and Facebook because they were hoping to hack both. And um, sure enough, a couple of days later, they start posting content. Now initially, they tried to like keep up this facade that it was me still. So like they took my content off of YouTube, which hello if you're watching this, you're a piece of work, karma is real. Anyways, um, they started posting like as me, but I don't know what they did. I, I kind of wish I had a video to show you guys the fact that I was so devastated over this. This was like a month or two ago that I couldn't even like think about filming it they had like corrupted my content. So my face was like this big and like I was all stripped out and it was content that I'd already posted. And not only that, they had just like taken my content off of YouTube and then reposted it on Facebook, but it had like sponsors from YouTube content in it. And also like throughout the video, it kept saying like, welcome to my YouTube channel. It just, it didn't make sense. So I'm like, these guys, for people who wanted to hack it, they didn't really have any proper plan. So I'm like, okay, hopefully they just keep pretending to be me. I didn't write them again, which they were probably very confused by. And I was just like, let me reach out to my contacts that I have, um, the people close to me that can help me to contact Facebook, to get this back. I'm gonna keep it low. For those of you who are writing me asking like, why aren't you posting about this? The page should be reported. I didn't wanna lose the page. I didn't want them to think that I was onto them and then delete the page because they had power to do so and then I lose the page in its entirety. So I let them think they won and I let them keep posting for like an entire month and they only tried to be me for like a couple of days and they realized that wasn't working. And then they shifted into, get this guys, they shifted into a number of things. But even within their bio, one of the things that they liked to post was scams. Isn't that ironic? Anyways, um, they were posting like Chris Hansen, they were posting true crime videos, they were posting um, people who inject meat tenderizer into their body, very interesting things, some of which actually did very well. But the problem was they were posting this, like just ripping off people's content. And there was a copyright thing that I'm still having to work through. Fingers crossed that all gets resolved. But like, you can't just take people's content in its entirety and post it. So uh, Facebook didn't love that for me. Long story short, I did end up getting my Facebook page back. Thank you so much to my network manager and to everybody at Facebook that had a hand and helped me get my page back. I will never be that naive again. I'm gonna be that person that like in business meetings, they're gonna be like, who hurt you? And I'm gonna be like, well, this one time, I was apologizing to the hacker for not letting him hack me quick enough. But I thought that I was being a nice person. And they're gonna be like, 
Gotcha. Obviously, in hindsight, it's not the world's biggest deal. Looking back, I, I realized where I went wrong on multiple levels. But in talking to people, I kept saying, like, especially people that are in the business and that are working online and in social media, I was like, I feel so stupid. And they were like, don't. With AI, these hackers are getting so good. In fact, we believe there's a possibility that all of the emails were generated via AI. And that's why they were so professional. They were so catered and customed and well done as were the correspondences as were all the responses whether that's true or not it's speculation um but yeah i was hacked and in digging through this there's a channel that i watch here on youtube sometimes called scammer payback and i now fully understand that these people exist and there is no remorse for hacking into people's accounts for hacking into people's finances for trying to make money off of people's businesses um preying on the elderly or the vulnerable or the weak oh it makes me so 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 sick so i just wanted to share what happened to me again i see my faults in this i'm just so grateful that i was able to get it back it will never happen again on any forms of my social media in fact i went through and like hyped up the privacy on everything even though i literally like opened up my door and was like come on in i trust you we've talked for a few months like I might as well have just like, if Facebook was my house, I opened up the door to the robber and was like, come take a look around. I'm so sorry that I didn't hand you my things quicker. Oh well, it was an experience, life happens. I'm grateful that I was able to get it back, but please be so careful on all of your social medias. Be careful who you trust. I was talking to some people who their close friends were hacked and via using AI, they were able to like, talk like them via like the conversations they were able to convince them that they needed money and that money was never returned and that money was just taken from them it was a complete hacker my grandma was almost um scammed once by someone almost said the money the internet is a beautiful but dark place so be very careful. Um, if you're still watching this video, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you enjoyed this story time. I haven't really sat down and just like hung out with you guys in a hot minute. And I was like, you know what? This is, this is who I am. You know, I believe the world is a beautiful place, even though I know there is darkness. And then every now and then the darkness is like, hi, <laughs> we're still here. Keep your guard up. Um, but yeah, that is my experience. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. With that being said, quick little update on the Facebook page. Even though I have it back, my name is still what they changed it to on Facebook because you can only change it every 60 days. So I'm currently Everyday Society on Facebook. That will be changed in the coming weeks, hopefully days, if I can get some help with that, but it will be changed. I will have a link to it at the top of my description. Go watch some content on there. Um, follow me on Facebook if you would like more content of me. And that is my update. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, yeah, that is basically it for my story time. Be kind to me in the comments, guys. I'm just a girl, I'm just a baby. <laughs> um, with that being said, I hope that you guys have an absolutely beautiful morning, afternoon, or night. If you do enjoy my content, I would love it if you go ahead and join our family, click that subscribe button, give this video a big thumbs up for me learning my lesson. <laughs> and until next time, I love you guys. Bye.